Eat it for life. Yep. Okay. It's recording. That's recording. Hi, this is Robert. I have dueling cameras going here. And that's because I've been having issues with my old camera, which is this guy, the SJ Cam. And it's been having trouble either writing to the uh, SD cards or reading the SD cards. Either way, I'll make a video and take it upstairs and try and download it into uh, my Adobe, uh, what's it called? Crap. Premiere Elements. And uh, <laughs> there's nothing there. Says the data is not there or corrupted or whatever. So anyway, I'm that forced me. I don't know if we'll be able to see this, but I have an a GoPro Hero 7 Black now that I'm going to be using, and I'm still learning the quirks of it. Hopefully, we're getting video from at least one of these. It would be novel. Oh, I should turn the sound down on that. Uh, so I wanted to talk about a lot of the, uh, there have been a few changes besides the new camera. Uh, one is, if you look, that's a new television. You know, so it fills the entire space between the speakers. That's a uh, Sony... What is it? The A80J OLED TV. And that's an amazing picture. Uh, definitely better than my 12-year-old uh, uh, Samsung that I had. And uh, that uh, pretty much ate up a bonus that I'd made. And uh, But it's a stunning picture on the thing. Can't wait to see if I see a uh, increase in the quality of the video on the uh, GoPro here. This is my first official GoPro. The SK SJ has always been a little uh, fussy for me. I got it to do uh, cycling moto vlogs and. Uh, I always hated that it turned my uh, red motorcycles orange. You can see that if you look at any of the old uh, Superhawk videos. I think it even does it with the uh, Ducati, even though the, the Ducati are nowhere near uh, Scarlet. It tends more towards the crimson side of red. Excuse me, I'm drinking coffee. But projects, uh, I don't know if you can see down on the floor there, there are the ADS speakers. And I've talked uh, about uh, possibly upgrading them. And I did open them up uh, the other day. And you'll probably be seeing some pictures of them that I'll be posting. But here's a shot of the uh, woofer as it came out of the unit. And right behind the bottom woofer is the crossover. And it mounts uh, with two screws to uh, the... Uh, um, they're not binding posts. Or I would call them uh, uh, speaker clips, speaker wire clips. or spring-loaded clips that you... Stick the wire, you push down on to release the spring tension. Uh, you put the wire in the hole, release the, the uh, push button, and then it clamps, the spring tension clamps on the wire. It's not the best system because you don't get a lot of uh, surface area contact with it. So I'll probably try and upgrade those to binding posts. The black cylinder you see is a 100 microfarad uh, 
non-polarized electrolytic. I'm going to see if I can get a better version of that. I believe Nichicon has some really nice non-polarized. I'm definitely not going to uh, spend the money for any black gates, not that there are any around anymore. But anyway, in the center there, you can see there are two of the uh, sandcast uh, wire wound resistors at the top. I'll probably change those for non-inductive. And then you can see there are three yellow uh, film resistors of some sort. I assume uh, they're probably polyester. And I'll see if I can find some nice compact uh, polypropylenes to put in there. That might make it too bright. I don't know. The uh, coils are a pretty fine gauge of wire. Only the very large one on the left uh, for the woofers has uh, a significant gauge to it. But anyway, we look at the next shot. You can see it in better detail. And that's a uh, speaker fuse on the left that you see there. Closer up there, you can actually see the markings on the uh, electrolytic and uh, pretty much all the caps as well. So this is a, uh, I believe this is a, uh, I don't think it's a PCB. It looks like it's masonite, so I suspect uh, everything's just wired point to point on the other side. I won't know till I get it apart. Anyway, you can see a couple more pictures here of it. And so, what else do I need to talk about? Um, well, you can see, uh, you've probably been looking at the Hi-Vi, the Swan speaker, sitting up there. That's going to be their new place to live. Uh, I may end up putting them on either side of the dining room as surround speakers. Because down on the floor, I have an ADS ancient ADS surround sound add-on amplifier uh, was done when people were first getting into surround sound and Dolby Pro Logic was the new hit thing. Uh, many companies made uh, uh, free channel amplifiers that you could add to your stereo amplifier to get the required five channels and they would often come with onboard Dolby ProLogic processors and that's what that AdCom is. I forget what its model name is. GFA 560, 580, something like that. Anyway, I'm, uh, it's a bit noisy. It's got a little bit of offset which I need to look at. It may need the uh, input op amps changed on it. But the thought is to give it a Wi-Fi hookup to the main system and use it to power the Hi-Vi speakers back here in the dining room for surround sound. That's about as far as I really care to delve into surround sound. There are probably newer and better ways to do it, but I have that AdCom unit, so why not? And the other thing, oh yeah, let's see if I can... Uh, find that looking at my phone for the pictures I've taken I did make one change to the Nelson Pass F6 and that was uh, I'd been you may recall I told you that the uh, thermistor on the transformer primary was running quite hot it was up at 80 degrees centigrade which is <laughs> not far from the boiling point of water, so I was concerned for its longevity. And I ended up uh, just getting another thermistor and hooking it up to the uh, circle tab. Uh, what are those called? Oh, well, can't see it. It's under the wreckage. But I, uh, on the, I just mounted another uh, thermistor on top of the old one in parallel with it on the uh, terminal strip, which would cut the current through each one by half. 
and the temp on them dropped to 60 degrees C, which I feel is a lot more acceptable. I mean, that's within the, the uh, realm of Class A output transistors, so I'm not too concerned for it. The other thing, let's see, so much news. I mean, my life is just brimming with excitement. Not really. But you will also be seeing some pictures of my old 12B4A preamp, which I uh, hooked up to the oscilloscope, ran some uh, signals through it, wanted to see how it looked. And because uh, I was concerned about it, it, it plays, it has a, a fairly detailed sound, but it sounds very dated, very thick, uh, dark, dense, you know, like a classic tube sound. Uh, and I don't really care for that. It's a little too colored for me. And I assume that's just bunches of uh, second harmonic distortion. But my concern was it wasn't biased right. And so I, uh, to check that, I uh, use this uh, funky little uh, signal generator here and monitored the output of the preamp. And uh, the preamp's fairly low gain. I mean, the uh, 12B four tubes, they only have an amplification factor of five. I mean, they're more miniature power tubes than any kind of high gain preamp tube. But they do lend themselves to uh, mu follower uh, zero feedback type circuits because of that. So I ended up running this guy up to uh, six volts RMS. And I could read 30 volts RMS on the scope, which said, yep, it was, the tubes were doing their amplification factor. So I think I've got it biased properly. I saw no premature clipping on one side or the other, which was my main concern. You know, I figured as dark as it sounded, I'd probably just, uh, you know, I, once I got up above two volts, I'd probably see one side starting to clip some indication of non-linearity, but didn't see that. And you can also see here that I uh, once again have the, uh, the keto board out. I need to finish this thing. I've been putting it off forever. And part of that is uh, just kind of disappointed in how I'm going to do it, I think. What it looks like uh, here, you can see I've got a, uh, the power transformer on the right and then the uh, uh, filter inductor on the left. Which This will be my first time putting a filter inductor in a uh, preamp, so it'll be interesting. This you configure yourself, and I have it configured at, actually as a headphone amplifier because I want to see how it'll sound with a very low output impedance. So anyway, that's going to go inside. I'll probably mount it on this floor. Actually, what I should do is take, whoa, yes, hook that. I just pulled the whole mic off the assembly off the table. I might just mount everything on this bottom plate and then stick, uh, use a long service loop of wire to put and then use the main case as the top cover. That would, that way we don't see the seam too well. It's not too prominent on being on top. It'd be on the bottom then. This has wood pieces that go on each side. Anyway, uh, it's going to have this uh, selector switch, which you get online from, I believe it's from uh, Triode Audio. I forget who was selling that. Tubes and more? Somebody. And then, of course, the classic Alps Blue 
uh, the blue beauties or whatever they call them. And they'll probably mount on the front here. But I think that's it. That'll, that's a little taste of what future projects will be. Oh yeah, there is one more which will be happening this winter. If you look, you can see there, those are the uh, frames for the uh, high vise speakers for the speaker grills, which I'm probably never going to use. But the box behind them is a chassis for, it's another uh, DIY audio Galaxy 5 unit high case. Because my thought is to convert the uh, my uh, Nelson Pass F5 to a pair of mono blocks, which would allow me to go up to 100 watts Class A on, on them into 8 ohms, which would be close to 200, I'm pretty sure, in the 4 ohms. And that should be more than friggin' enough to drive the Maggie's or any other inefficient speaker. However, I would be doubling the heat output into the room, so they definitely be winter only amplifiers. Anyway, that's a little taste of the madness to come. Um, thanks for watching. If you like this sort of droning on, please like and subscribe. I appreciate all of you out there, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.